Hey, what's cooking, people? Just thought I'd quickly touch upon this recent news story. You know, thinking back more to my Sega Saturn days, it was here that I first started to get to know the name Yuji Naka, uh, a name who seemingly had been you know, involved in many of my favourite Sega Saturn games, and just Sega games in general, actually, as, as well as you know, being part of Sonic Team, a name I could you know, quite proudly say back in the day, but unfortunately uh, not as much now. <laughs> yeah. Y Yuji Naka had been a lead programmer on some of my favourite games from the Sega of old. You know, games uh, like Alex the Kid in Miracle World, a, a game that was built into my Sega Master System 2, uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog games, which I'll touch uh, upon more in a moment, and then when you hit the Sega Saturn, you have games like Nights into Dreams, which is a stunning title. Burning Rangers, which pushed the Sega Saturn to the max, but you know I still love that game and would very much like a sequel. And the legend that is Fantasy Star Online, uh, a game that deserves its own video for the near future. Then after the Saturn, um, Yuji Naka is still involved in games where he's listed mostly as producer, like Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Choo Choo Rocket, which uh, he also was a director of and a few other games like Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg, which arguably has the best intro song to any video game ever. <laughs> After a few other games, Yuji Naka left Sega and founded his own studio called Probe, where he was the producer of games like Let's Tap, which, if you remember, used a cardboard box as an accessory. <laughs> I guess uh, Yuji Naka beat Nintendo to it. Then you had Ivy the Kiwi, and finally the last game I remember him doing was Rodea the Sky Soldier, which came to the Wii, Wii U and 3DS. You know, a game I never got around to buying uh, I mean, I, I heard mixed reviews on it and it didn't actually look great, but I, I still kind of wish I, I got it and, you know, maybe it's not too late. So, you know, as you can see, Yuji Naka has been involved in many of Sega's great games and his name grew in Sega Legend because of his involvement in said games, as well as his great programming skills. Now, admittedly, this uh, title is uh, a, a sort of clickbait, which you know something I, you know, I don't like doing. But you know, it does have some backbone to it. You know, at least from my perspective, and I, I couldn't help but laugh at the at the title because it was the first thing that came in my head. <laughs> it, just, it just made me laugh. I'm not here to directly chew Yuji Naka out, you know, not at all. I'm here to perhaps tell a cautionary tale, one I would apply to most people in this industry, you know, at least those who have worked on many games that are considered great, uh, but with some of them showing interesting telling signs. It's a discussion that I've had with uh, friends before about being uh, skeptical, you know, once again, and I want to give my reasons why I'm skeptical towards certain things uh, or at least in this case towards Yuji Naka but you know not not because I don't believe he is a capable man you know not at all it's you know but it's because I have yet to see anything from him after his Sega glory days that truly fill me with confidence that he's the lone magic maker who truly deserves all the glory you know first I'd like to show you this man on the right that's Naoto Oshima you know never Heard of his name? You know, believe it or not, you know many people haven't, or you know at least not as much as Yuji Naka. Nyoto Oshima is not the producer or lead programmer on these games I'll mention, but he's the director, the designer, and or character designer of these games. These games being Fantasy Star One and Two, the original ones, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic CD, Nights into Dreams, Burning Rangers, and Sonic Adventure, to name a few. You know, now it's, you know, it's a well-known story that Yuji Naka was not the only person to help bring into creation Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, as it was Nyoto Oshima who originally thought of the idea of using a hedgehog and later, later refined that into Sonic. You know, thanks with the help of Yuji Naka's programming skills and then working together to get this early character design to work, you know, as well as the awesome level design from Hirokazu Yoshihara. Another man who needs to be mentioned every time when talking about the early Sonic games. As you can see here, there are always multiple important people involved here in, in most of Yuji Naka's famed achievements. And the same can you know, obviously be said for any game. 
you know, any other game. But you know, the times where I become skeptical are the times where names are taken to stardom. Uh, you know, the games where a person's name is the only one remembered, f you know, for the creations. You know, especially AAA ones. You know, and I start to wonder what would happen if these people were taken away from their original studios and cast out into the wild with their fame to uh, create their own games. You know, without the corporate dragon breathing down their necks. You know, as examples, you know, you can look no further than Kenji Unafune and his imposed. Uh, title as the father of Mega Man, which we all know just isn't true. You know, you, you have this big name who says, you know, comes out to say Japanese gaming is dying, leaves Capcom to form his own studio, then releases Mighty Number no. 9, which we you know, shall not mention again. It is to darkness that vilest creature. Ah. Then we have Hideo Kojima. You know, another big name who we all know has worked on the Metal Gear series, Zony Enders, and a number of other titles. And in a previous video, you know, I said the same thing. It's not I don't believe Kojima is not a capable man. I, I just need to see him out in the wild. And so far, from what I've seen of Death Stranding, you know, at least we can all agree that he's that his need to create insanely long trailers hasn't changed. <laughs> Yeah. In regards to Yuji Naka, you know, since he's been out in the wild, we've had Ivy the Kiwi, Let's Tap, and a bit more of a beefier title that is Rodea the Sky Soldier, where once again he was the producer. You know, let's let's just say that I have yet to see the magic that Yuji Naka was a part of during his Sega days, which is why I remain skeptical. Now, don't get this confused with me not being interested in his new recent position at Square Enix. In fact, I'm you know, very intrigued to see what he'll be working on and once again, what his involvement in that title or titles will be. He's now at one of the largest Japanese developers you know, we know of. Unlike his trip out into the wild, he's now back in a place of money, which should help fund perhaps a game that he's always wished to create himself, given half the chance. You know, I, I hope he succeeds, I, I really do. But at the same time, after everything he's been involved with in, say, the last, well, 15, uh, 15, 16 years, you know, let's, let's just say, once again, that I'll remain skeptical until I've seen and tasted the pudding, because it's hard, you know, not to think that Yuji Naka's name could perhaps carry more weight than perhaps what he's capable of, you know, which sounds harsh, but like, again, I just, I just want to see now, you know, once again, what he can do. You know, anyway, what are your thoughts? Are you interested in Yuji Naka's announcement that he's working for Square? You know, are you a Yuji Naka fan? Or what are your favourite games he's been involved with? Or are you like me, a little, a little skeptical where you'll wait and see what this man produces, you know, before you can before we get too excited. But as always, you know, thanks for listening and I look forward to your comments below. Peace.